Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unlocked Show. I'm your host, Tracy Wilson. Give me two seconds, because I'm just going to check something. I don't know that my uh, my headset is working correctly. So, you know, as, as what happens sometimes with uh, when you're live, stuff just doesn't go the way it should. Let me just turn that on. I think that is way better. Anyhow, welcome to today's show. In today's episode, I want to talk about... Um, being a guest on other people's podcasts and for some of you you might have been sitting around thinking gosh I need to get the word out about my business and and I was looking through my Facebook um, just this morning actually and I saw some really good friends of mine who have opened up new businesses in New Zealand actually they were talking about what they're having to do to get people to come into their businesses and it kind of dawned on me that what we've got this amazing tool at our fingertips that we can use on the regular which is either doing live shows like this because it's pretty darn simple when you know the tools the resources that you need and how to do it and then secondly how to be a pod how to be a guest on other people's podcasts is a fantastic way of being able to get your skills your expertise and your knowledge out to a much wider audience and even your products and your services if you want to jump on to various different podcasts and start talking about those and if you think about it nowadays there are podcasts on all kinds of topics if you think you're in a business that you know maybe a podcast is not right for you think again go and have a bit of a look in uh, apple Podcasts or stitcher or any of those places and you will find podcasts on all kinds of topics that being said that provides a huge amount of opportunity for you guys to jump in and start talking about your skills your expertise and your products do you necessarily have to go the full hog and create your own podcast or your own show like this? No, you don't. You can start out by simply being a guest on other people's podcasts to make it really, really easy on yourself. Now, to do this, I often get people asking me, well, what do I need to do? How do I need to prepare myself to make myself, you know, put myself in the best possible position that a that I would be a great host. Let me just check. I'm just making sure. Yeah. And I'm just making sure that you guys can actually hear me and then I'm getting comments through. So anyone that's watching now, you guys know that this is live. You can comment to me. And thanks, guys, because I'm seeing those comments come through. And someone's saying there are over 450,000 podcasts. There are a, an enormous amount of podcasts and new ones coming to, uh, you know, to, the, to your ears um, on the regular. So that being said, when you're wanting to, be, when you've made the decision to say, hey, I actually am ready, I want to be a guest on other people's podcasts, what do I need to do? What other things do I need to do to prepare myself to be a guest? The first one I've kind of just covered, it is making the mental um, you know, shift that you are going to be a guest on other people's podcasts. So you need to make that mental shift and get yourself mentally prepared to be a guest on other people's podcasts. The next thing you want to think about is if you are going to be a guest on other people's podcasts, why do you actually want to do that? What's the purpose of doing it? And a lot of people would say, as I've just mentioned at the beginning, you know, you might be thinking, how do I get more uh, information out about my products and my services? So the immediate question, the immediate thing that most people um, think of when I ask them this question is, I want to try and sell more of my stuff. And that might sound really obvious, but it's actually an outcome of, uh, of actually being on the show. And if you lead with value, the sales and the opportunities will come. So the very first thing you actually want to do, so even though this is a bit of a, a what do you call it, a question that I'm going to, a rhetorical question um, that I'm going to answer for you, and it is the reason we want to do it is so that we can add value to other people's lives and to other people's shows. That's our very first reason we want to do it. If you come at it from an angle of, I want to go in there and I want to try and sell, 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 then you know you're probably not going to find yourself on very many podcasts because a lot of podcast uh, hosts won't enjoy that type of uh, angle. And secondly, people will get sick of listening to that um, that sell, sell, sell mentality all the time. So you want to come at it from a point of view of you're wanting to give, 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 give as much as you possibly can and add value to both the host and adding value to their listeners. There's, a, there's a, um, an interesting thing that we talk about, you know, in terms of whether or not you want to be a, a host of your own show or you want to be a guest on somebody else's show. And we often say that being a, a host, so 
creating your own show like this really gives you the opportunity to showcase your expertise. It positions you well. It it, uh, it creates influence and authority. So if you're wanting to elevate your influence and authority, then you would create your own live show or your own podcast. You'd be the host of that. When you're being a guest on other people's shows, the great thing about that is you're actually expanding your networks. So if you think about for a moment, that host has spent a lot of time building their expertise, building their uh, influence and their authority, and they've created an audience for themselves. They're now giving you the opportunity to reach that audience. So instead of you having to work really, really, really hard to try and build up an audience yourself, you have the opportunity to be able to add value to that host's audience and actually tap into and be able to reach that audience really, really easily because the host has done a lot of the hard yards and the legwork for you. They've done a lot of the work in setting up the uh, the show and the podcast behind the scenes. They'll do a lot of the work in terms of promoting the show uh, before and after you are the guest on the show. So you want to make sure that when you are appearing on their show, that you've done everything you possibly can to prepare as well as you possibly can. A, to get yourself booked on a show, and then secondly, so that you can actually show up and, like I said, lead with value and be prepared enough that you're able to hold a really good conversation. So we want to understand who our audience is. So before you even get, um, you know, you go down the rabbit hole of, Whose podcast should I be on? You want to understand very, very clearly who is it that you are trying to trying to help change your life? Who are you trying to uh, inform? Who are you trying to work with? Who are you trying to influence? You want to really, really understand that because there's no point in being on other people's podcasts that are in a toad that, that attract a completely different audience to that that you are looking to serve. So that's probably the very first thing you want to start considering too. And then you also want to make sure that are you ready to have being a guest on, on other people's podcasts as part of your ongoing marketing strategy. And I just want to say that again, as part of your ongoing marketing strategy. So if you're not ready, if you're sort of dabbling in it and you're going to do a few here and a few there, that's okay. But it's probably not likely to be part of your long-term marketing strategy. So this is very much a conscious decision to be a guest on other people's show and be doing that on a regular basis. The next thing you want to think about is what is your availability? Do you have the time to be able to do this? And if you do, what days of the weeks or what times are you going to make yourself available? Because again, you don't want to go out starting to pitch yourself to various different podcasts only to find out that in your time zone that it might be 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning. That's totally okay if you're prepared to get up at that hour of the morning. But if you're not, you want to make sure that you're actually looking for podcasts that will either ear record or uh, yeah, air or record at a time that is suitable to you in a reasonable hour of the day because you don't want to be waking up in the middle of the night trying to uh, you know put your best foot forward and I've done that a number of times and you know I've been able to pull it off but you don't want to be doing that on the regular. The next thing you want to think about is your environment. And a lot of people don't often think about this. And, and I heard um, one of the guests that I had on my show, I think it was last week, and he was talking about how he had a guest come onto his show. And uh, there was a lot of noise. There was a lot of stuff going on in the background. And he was trying to determine where is this person. In this case, he was doing a podcast. So it was audio only. And he, only to find out that the person was rushing. They were they were uh, you know stuck in traffic and they were trying to be the guest on a podcast from their car and it's really difficult for the host as well as the person you know being the guest to try and put again put their best foot forward and be present in that podcast if they are distracted and trying to you know try to drive and as we now know if you're in Australia you get caught doing that sort of stuff you're in for a very big fine so that's probably the case um, you know right around the world so just be be mindful of that make sure that you are prepared that you've got the right environment set up 
So when I'm talking about environment, you want to make sure that you've got a place in your house. So in my house, I've got my own little office. It's um, at the, the back of my house. It's my place. This is where I come to do my work and my shows. And I'm able to do it without, you know, a lot of interruptions. People are not walking past me. Um, not now anyway, because I've, I've solved that problem. Um you know, and those sorts of things. So you want to make sure that you've got the right sort of environment. The other thing that you want to think about is your background. So do you have to have anything fancy? Do you have to go out and, you know, buy yourself this really, um, you know, fancy background? No, you don't. You might just want to put, you know, a nice bookcase in the background, some flowers, a few, you know, a nice color on the wall, whatever it is that you're going to do, just make sure that it's, it's, it's well uh, organized in the back because again you might think that's quite trivial but when particularly if you're doing a live show or a a, um, a video show what's going on in the background can be extremely distracting and can take away from what you are speaking about so you just want to make sure that you're um, that that is the case sometimes it can add to uh, the humor of the show I can recall uh, being having a senator from the United States actually on uh, one of my shows uh, a few months back and it was quite funny because uh, as she was trying to be all um, you know very very professional uh, in the background was the cleaner doing the cleaning for the night and he obviously realized that there was something going on and did a little bit of a, um, a funny little dance in the background so we thought that was a bit hilarious but anyway you know those sorts of things can be be distracting but that just goes to show the sort of stuff that gets noticed even though it's in the background of uh, you know of your set the other is making sure that you've got a good microphone, even some headset. One of the things, you know, it was a bit funny. Someone's having a bit of a chuckle here. Um, one of the things that that a lot of people don't do, and again, this might sound really um, simple, but it's like even putting on, you know, a pair of earbuds or a headset on when you're doing uh, either a live show or doing a, uh, a podcast because it reduces the amount of echo. So you want to make sure that you do that and you're not getting any feedback from your uh, from any of your equipment um, by utilizing, you know, having a headset on. And it can be just something as simple as plugging in the earbuds from your phone uh, so that you're not getting that feedback. And another little tip uh, that I want to give you guys is background noise. So if you're having trouble and you, what you're finding is that when you're doing recordings, you're getting a lot of background noise, there's actually an application that you can download. It's a Chrome app uh, and it's called Crisp, K-R-I-S-P, Crisp. Uh, so you could download that and it really helps to reduce the background noise. If you're using uh, recording equipment or recording software such as StreamYard, StreamYard does a fantastic job of being able to eliminate a lot of the background noise, but also the microphone that you use will, uh, will help in that case too. So I've covered microphone, your background, I've covered off, um, you know, the use of a headset. So it might sound, I don't use this, obviously you're seeing me have the little, um, what do you call this, the voice handle or whatever you, whatever you want to call it, uh, on my headset. Obviously, I'm not using that right now. I use this for other purposes, but I certainly use it uh, for the sound so that it's not coming back through my computer and you're not hearing that echo. Okay, so now we've covered off some of the fundamental things. The next things you want to start thinking about is your website. So have you got your website up to scratch? Is it up to date with the infant with relevant and current information the number of times that i see people either not having a website so not having their own personal brand of websites so if you're going to be on other people's podcasts they're going to be looking you up i can guarantee that uh, and you want to make sure that you've got you know your website's looking nice that you've got the right sort of information on there and it's in alignment with what you're going to be speaking about you know you don't have a bakery and then all of a sudden you're speaking about i don't know watches it's a crazy um, example there, but, you know, you get my drift. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're in alignment with that. And when you're providing them with the links to your website and to your social profiles, that it all makes sense that they can look at that and say, yeah, you know, she talks about that on the regular. She must be an expert at it. The other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got your media kit ready to go. Now, this is probably the, the, the place where a lot of people get stuck because it requires you to write about yourself. And uh, if you're like most people, most people don't like to do that. And in most cases, we actually 
humble things down. And in this case, you know, these are the times on your website and in your other uh, platforms, you've got to really brag about yourself. That's the times where you've got to pull out that, you know, inner bragger and start talking about all the great things that you do. Uh, but you want to do it very, very succinctly. And there's a way in which you do it to create your media sheet or also known as a one sheet or media kit. So what do you need to have in this media kit? Very, very simple. And I'm going to give you guys a tool today that you can go, you can download, and I'm going to give you a, uh, a document which runs through everything that you should have on your media kit. And then also a template. So it's just a plug, you know, fill in the gaps, plug and play kind of template that you can use that will help you get your media sheet up to date and get you ready so that you can be an amazing guest on other people's podcasts. So what sort of stuff do you need to have on there? Like I said, it does it's one sheet. So you don't have, you know, loads and loads of room to be able to write lots of stuff. So it's very succinct. First thing you want to talk about is who are you? What about you? Why should they have you on their show? What makes you so special? Why? What makes you qualified to speak about what you're going to be speaking about? And at the top, you might even want to have some form of tagline, right? So again, in the template that I provide you and in the information I give you, when you go and download it, it's got a lot more tools and will walk you through how to do this very simply. The next thing you want to do is I always think it's nice to have your mission on there. Like, What are you trying to do? What change is it that you are trying to create in this world? Why, why are you doing what you do? So, you know, a little a few sentences, a paragraph about your mission is always nice to have on there. The next thing that you want to start thinking about is you want to get together at least one to six speaking topics, right? So you might speak about if you have a particular genre that you talk about. So for example, the Unlock Show, right? So I talk about creating your online business. I talk about podcasting and creating your own show. I talk about elevating that with influence and authority by creating your own book. So there's kind of three different things that I talk about, but they're all in alignment all in the same category of creating a freedom-based lifestyle. So if you can think about it from that uh, perspective, you know, what is it that you do? And I know my good friend Vicki Helm, whenever she's doing this, when she's writing books, she talks about the nutshell message. So it's kind of like, what do you do? Pull it all together, put it in a nutshell and allow your potential person who's going to be booking you to understand what it is that you do really quickly. So put together one to six speaking topics makes it super, super simple for the host to actually get you booked, but then also to come up with a subject that they are going to, or a, a title for the show. The easier you can make it for a host to book you, the more bookings you're going to get, the more shows you are likely to be on. Aside from you must get on there and do a really good job, of course. So this is about getting booked in the first instance. So make it really, really easy on the booking agent and also the show host by providing them with these things. So one to six topics that you can speak on. The next you want to think about is do you have frameworks, methods or formulas so if you haven't already created these, I talk about these a lot um, with my students, you know, coming up with proprietary formulas, methods, uh, and um, and frameworks, because when you can create that, it makes it really, really simple, A, for you to be able to teach it, but secondly, for you to be able to recall the information and be able to speak about it again easily. And you'll hear me talk a lot about, you know, frameworks, uh, uh, you know, the methods and formulas because they thread throughout all of those three things that I've spoken about, how to create your online programs, how to create uh, your own show, how to create your own books. They get threaded throughout all three of those things. So they're super important. So just really take a moment to think about those. How do you make something proprietary? You create your own special formula, your own method and uh, your own frameworks right so you want to make sure that you've got those because it makes it easy again for you to be able to talk about those it makes them also a little bit intriguing people are interested if i said to you hey do you want to hear about the ace method or do you know what the ace method is most people would say no i don't know what that is but i am intrigued what is the ace method and so then that gives you the opening to be able to continue to, to chat and talk about that and continue to add value then you want to also uh, think about 
10 questions that you would be ready to answer. So if a show host was to ask you questions, and what this actually does for you guys is it actually puts you in the driver's seat. So no longer are you sort of sitting. So if you can imagine that, you know, I'm imagining this, I'm taking myself back to the first few times that I did a podcast and I didn't have all of these things. I just had, you know, a uh, Come uh, have me on your show. Maybe people knew about me and wanted to have me, but I didn't really know what they were going to ask me. So what happens? The nerves start happening because you're not sure if you're going to be able to answer the questions that they pose to you. You're not sure if you're going to say and do the right thing, right? So, you, so your anxiety levels of anxieties tend to rise. What you want to do to ensure or to help yourself out a little bit is to actually pre-prepare the questions and provide them to your show host. So come up with one to 10 questions, again, that are in alignment with the topics that you are speaking about. Come up with one to 10 questions that, that, that you would be ready to answer at a blink of an eye. So if somebody asked you that question, you could answer it very, very easily. And potentially you've even got a story that goes with it because stories are also important. So you don't need to provide the show host with the stories prior to you being booked on the show, but you want to have those stories up your sleeve. So they might be, um, you know, it could be a um, a story, something that's happened to you in the past. It might be an analogy. It could be something that's happened to somebody else, but something that enables you to create a story around the subject or the question that is being asked. So just have a bit of a think about those two and jot them down. So underneath each of your questions, again, not giving these stories to your you know, to the booking agent or to the host before the show, but you're certainly writing them down so that you could recall them really quickly and easily if you had to. And then you also want to start thinking about are there other tools and resources that you could provide the viewers and the listeners of the shows that you are appearing on? Why is this important? Well, one, you probably got some stuff that you would like to provide. But secondly, it also gives you an opportunity to be able to, let's say, make a big switch of the audience. So we're, uh, again, where you're leading with value, you're not selling anything. But what you are doing is you're providing additional value by way of saying, hey, I've got a free gift or a Here's a, a free cheat sheet or a something that would be useful for them, again, in alignment with what you've just spoken about. And that way, that's going to send traffic to your website and or your landing pages, and it gives them an opportunity to opt in to what you're speaking about. So just as I've just spoken about today, as I was going through this, often as I'm preparing for these shows, I get loads and loads of ideas. And as I was preparing for this, I'm like, there's a couple of things that I think would be super useful for anybody who's interested in being a guest on other people's shows. One of which I already had prepared. I've had it for a while. It's something that I provide to um, to people on the regular. You can get it on my website by going to tracymwilson.com. But I'm also going to give it to you here. There is, so I'm just going to pop this up on the screen. So if you go to tracymwilson.com forward slash, forward slash speakers dash kit dash template that will actually give you a little booklet and a guide and it will walk you through how to get yourself prepared and then it will also provide you with that template that I mentioned a little bit earlier but as I was preparing for today's show it dawned on me that one of the things that would also be super useful would be a checklist so I'm going to prepare that checklist I'm almost done with it because I only thought of it sort of 10 minutes before the show and uh, and I'll make sure that it gets popped into the description or the show notes for today so that you guys too can go away you can grab that checklist make sure that you've covered all of the things before you get yourself onto the speaking circuit and uh, and start appearing on other people's shows so that you can get booked really really quickly before i um jump off today i want to leave you with a couple of really awesome tools so if you are thinking about doing this first thing you want to do go and download those two uh, freebies that i'm giving you guys today and keep your eyes peeled for the checklist but then head on over to podmatch.com. Again, I'll put the link into the show notes today. Uh, head on over there because you can find some amazing guests to be on your show. And if to be on your show, if you're going to be a show host, but equally you can find some amazing shows for you to appear on as a guest. 
Also, you can go to a platform called Audrey.io. Go and have a look there. And you will, again, find some amazing shows that you may find are useful for you and that you know you have some great synergy and alignment with and you want to appear on their show because you think that you can add some value so that being said today guys i'm going to say thanks very much for joining me it's a quick show today but i hope that i've covered a whole lot of stuff today but i hope it's you found this really useful i hope you go away and you grab those couple of freebies that i've created for you because they really will help you uh, in getting prepared to be on other people's shows and if you want to take this further and you want to obviously uh, create your own show, well, you can reach out to me and we can have a bit of a chat about how we make that happen. Anyway, guys, have a fantastic rest of the week. I'm going to be back again this Friday, 10 a.m. Brisbane time. For now, have a fantastic uh, week and go and live your life unlocked. Go and unlock that inner uh, show host or show guest that's sitting inside of you because people are waiting for you to be a guest on their shows. All right, guys. Have a fantastic rest of the week and bye for now.